All right, now to the real action, the first round of the NCAA men's tournament. Exciting day, three overtime finishes, handful of upsets, none bigger than the 15 seed Oral Roberts defeating Ohio State in the South region. One seeds Baylor and Hartford had no trouble in their 116 matchups, and the same can be said for the highly seeded Houston and West Virginia. In all, the higher seeds finished the day with a record of 10 and 6, led by a strong showing from the Big 12. They went 4 and 0 on the day. I drink plenty of action to get into. What stood out to you yesterday? All right, so you know I'm gonna jump in at three points that stood out to me yesterday. The first of which, uh, I'm not. You you named it. It's probably been the biggest story of the tournament thus far. Uh, Oral Roberts beating you know defeating the number two seed um, Ohio State in overtime, uh, and you know. I think for the, the true Big Ten fans that watched the Big Ten this year, they might have seen this coming. I'm, I didn't watch the Big Ten in obsess this year, but I watched it enough where I watched Ohio State play Illinois in the Big Ten championship, and, and I looked at that team, and I wasn't overly impressed. No. With that said, what did I think they was going to lose in the first round of the tournament? No. But I did think they was going to lose somewhat, you know, between the first round and Sweet 16. Um, Cause I, j I just wasn't like blown away by their performance, and then now they didn't lost already, and it kind of, it kind of you know cemented my my thought on that one. Um, but nonetheless, Oral Roberts, listen, we gotta understand with this NCAA tournament, we love to use the term Cinderella, we, we love to use the term underdog, we learn you know all these terms we use, and um, we we got our first headline, we got our first story. Uh, so, good luck to uh, Oral Roberts. You know what it is. Holla at your boy. Um, the second point I wanted to uh, drive home, well, that I wanted to point out was Syracuse, this 11 seed Syracuse defeating 6 seed on um, San Diego State. Now, I know you might be wondering, why in the hell are we talking about Syracuse and San Diego State? Well, this is why. Um, this was supposed to be one of those games of brand versus hard work. And I'm not saying like Syracuse don't work hard, but in this in this scenario, they are the brand. And I was hearing all this stuff about San Diego State. They got these juniors, they got these seniors, they got out, you know, they've been rolling and they don't get as much respect as they should because they play on the they they play in California and most people are asleep on the East Coast when they play in. Just that in the third. Um and then Syracuse came out with the same one two step they've been doing for years. The zone. Been doing the same step for years. And they still getting people out of here with it. So I'm hearing how uh, Jim Behan is, you know, falling behind. And he, he just don't have it like he used to. And Syracuse is not the fear brand that they used to, they once used to be in basketball. And this, that, and the third. But they still came into the tournament and got a win with the same zone they've been doing since 85. So... Take that for what it's worth. Brand versus hard work. Brand won that one. That that stood out to me. And my last point is the overall showing of the ACC turn uh, conference. Uh, I think you mentioned this when we when we first started talking about how the lack of respect for the ACC when you, you I think the high seeds was like Florida State and the other four seed. You had like two yeah. four seeds at the ACC. Yeah, Florida State, Virginia. Okay. And then Florida State goes and loses in the first round. Well, they haven't. So, they haven't. They haven't played yet. Oh uh, no! Who, who hasn't played yet? Uh, Florida State, and Virginia still haven't played yet. The other five ACC teams played: Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, Clemson, mm -hmm. Syracuse, and North Carolina. Okay. Wait, I must mixed up something. Then. Okay, so either way, Virginia Tech, you know, Georgia Tech, so. It, it wasn't an overall good showing for the ACC, no, nonetheless. Because no, no. um, you had 7 seed Clemson lose to 10 seed Rutgers. Like, stuff like that. I, and I'm not trying to beat up on the ACC, but my whole point of bringing them up was this. We was talking about you, the ACC, first of all. It used to be between the ACC and the Big Ten, right? Those, I mean, Big East, I'm sorry. The Big East. Those was like the two elite level conferences and then you threw the Big Ten somewhere around. Um, now the, the ACC is struggling so bad. And I don't know if it's because of COVID. I don't know what what's going on. Maybe they're not recruiting as well as they once did. But, you know, 
when you got the Big 12 going 4-0, it, it seemed like to be a changing of the guard as far as the conferences go in the game of um, NCAA basketball. So that stuck out to me because me being a fan of the ACC conference when it comes to basketball, I usually, I'm used to seeing Duke, North Carolina, Florida State, you know, those teams doing their thing. And then the, the second level of um, teams, like, at least being competitive, better than average. That's not what we're seeing this year. And you've seen in the, in, you know, at the beginning of the tournament, look look what we're seeing. We're mm -hmm. not we're not seeing the productivity from them. So, with that said, um, the ACC overall performance not looking good. You didn't get respect from the committee, and now we you you're act, you're actually making the committee right by your performance. So that was my third point that I took away from the first round. So, yeah, man, Oral Roberts then, then tore up everybody's bracket. Um. Syracuse still out here getting dubs with that same stale zone. And the ACC probably need to do a little better as a conference. Those are my three takeaways. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start with you where you ended, as I sometimes like to do. Uh, yeah, the ACC was not was not very good at all yesterday. That, that, now, they have had a little bit of bad luck. I mentioned uh, Georgia Tech being without uh, ACC Player of the Year, uh, Moses Wright. I believe he contracted COVID or something the other. Um, so that, that was a big factor in them. Going down to Loyal to Chicago, who's a pretty um pretty interesting team to watch, and I'm be interesting to see how they fare against Illinois in the second round. Uh, but Clemson going down to Rutgers, um, you know, not not very good there. Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech looked pretty good against Florida most of the day, but could not finish the deal. And uh, North Carolina, the 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 North Carolina was a performance that just probably you know encapsulated the ACC in general. They they got blasted. Uh, by Wisconsin, and I thought, I thought North Carolina would be, you know, probably a team to watch, and maybe a team that could give give Baylor a run in the in the second round. And go ahead and forget about that, uh, because Wisconsin just came out and they shot the absolute lights uh, out. Uh, this this guy Demetri Trice, he was electric. Uh, Brad Davison, that had to have been a c career game for him. And once North Carolina got down, they just they didn't have the they don't have the outside shooting to compensate. They're North Carolina plays a traditional brand of basketball, multiple bigs. They got like they got four big guys they can rotate in and out. Um, they pound the offensive boards and just 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 a day where just it, it, it didn't go well. And that was Roy Williams' first first loss in the round of 64 ever. He was 29 and 0 coming into that game. So significant uh, streak. Times has changed. Yes, yeah, significant <laughs> streak coming in the end there. And uh, yeah, of course it would be the Syracuse 85 zone that just, just people can't figure it out. And in in an NCAA tournament where Sy Syracuse's zone, it's it's been in the ACC. It's it gives people problems, but like you can figure it out when you have you know the, the coaches, you know Tony Bennett, Roy Williams, Coach K. The list goes on and on. They see the zone year in and year out, so they right. they have a better idea of how to attack it. You know, a team like San Diego State. And just, you know, all these other teams from different conferences from, you know, coast to coast, it, it's hard to prepare. It's hard to really be prepared and simulate that. And that's just that's something that happens seemingly year in, year out. Uh, Syracuse just finds a way to sneak on in the tournament as an 11 seed. So they barely got in. And then here we go. We throw this zone at you. and You can't figure it out. Uh, but, you know, beyond that, and I, you know, Big Ten has Big Ten's got a lot of respect this year, and I I, I think I've said I, I've I've looked at the Big Twelve with a little bit more respect than the Big Ten, and it certainly played that way out yesterday. Uh, of course, it probably looks a little bit different if Ohio State handled their business. Then you'd have the Big Ten at four and one, and the Big Twelve at four and zero. Oh. Uh, but de definitely, you know, historic. His you know, anytime a two beats a fifteen, you know. It's, it's 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 significant. That was only the ninth time it's happened. Um, or Roberts, they get 59, or 50, yeah, 59 points from two players. So 59 out of 75 came from two different guys. Get a 30 and a 29 performance. Um, you, you feel bad for Ohio State. Um, they had you know this kid Dwayne Washington at the end of regulation had a chance um, to win it with a little step back two. He misses it. Had two big free throw misses in overtime. And then he missed the game time three. So you just you, you feel bad for guys in that situation. But I think all the credit in the world should go to Oral Roberts. Um, 
North Texas also getting a pretty significant upset over Purdue. So, yeah. you know, the Big Ten having two of their higher seeds knocked out. And I always find, you know, this interesting, and because you talk about these overtime games, I always feel like the team that is, you know, the better team on paper and the, the, the team with the, you know, from the bigger conference, the longer the game goes, the more likely that team should probably win. And it's just interesting how that didn't turn out that way yesterday. Ohio State got five extra minutes against Oral Roberts. They couldn't, they couldn't overpower them. Purdue gets five extra minutes against North Texas. They couldn't overpower them. So, you know, just interesting how that works. And I got to throw in uh, one more nugget. I didn't, I wasn't watching this game terribly closely, uh, but my God, Tennessee, you just had to do it. You had to give the Pac-12 one win yesterday. And the only game the Pac-12 appeared in, I didn't even know, I couldn't tell you anything about Oregon it, State basketball, but Oregon it, State. It wasn't even just a win. Like, they, they went in there. Out. Wire to wire, just it, it didn't. I, it didn't look like it was particularly close the whole way. No, it wasn't. But lots more to get to. We got the West and East brackets. That means Gonzaga. That means Michigan will get underway. And that means Alabama. Alabama will get underway. And don't and you know, before you completely bury the ACC, they still do have their best. Their two best teams. Can maybe salvage something. I think Florida State and Virginia, they got great chances to get to the Sweet 16. So they both right. can handle their business. They can salvage a little bit, and you <laughs> never know. That Syracuse zone may, maybe they can throw West Virginia off and they can keep moving. We shall see.